Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking everything you need to know about flukes and other soft jerk baits. The Zoom Super Fluke is definitely the most well-known of the soft jerk baits. In fact, most people don't call it soft jerk baiting, they call it fluke fishing. A bait is pretty universal when they name an entire category after it. I mean, there's no way around it. The Zoom Super Fluke is a fish catching bait, period. You can do all sorts of things with them. You can fish these baits as a topwater. You can fish them subsurface. You can fish them like a jerk bait. You can fish them like a Senko. You can fish them on a Carolina rig. So many different ways to fish them. But what we're going to talk about today is how to use them effectively as a reaction bait. We've got four different approaches that we're going to talk about. Some traditional fluke fishing, if you will, soft jerk bait fishing. Then we're going to talk about the donkey rig, how to do it, when it's best to be used, some of the tricks I use to really dial it in. If you're not familiar with the donkey rig, you're about to be. Then we're going to talk about the nose hook rig or what we like to call the banjo minnow rig. And then finally, we're going to talk about some bait finesse applications, some downsized approaches. No surprises, that's all of it. That's what we're talking about today. Soft jerk baits are incredibly effective this time of year. Now, all the way through the end of fall, you can fish them around grass, you can fish them in open water, you can fish them in and around brush and lay downs and docks. There's almost anything you can do with it. You can throw it on the Tennessee River, you can throw it on the Great Lakes. It's unbelievable how well they work when you know how to adapt them and adapting them is everything. And that's why we're taking the time to do this video today. Let's start with the basic soft jerkbait rig, okay? Just the standard, and then we're going to go from there. The standard that I like to do is, is just like this. There's a Zoom Super Fluke, electric shad color, on a four aught wide gap hook, okay? So I'll take any variety of four aught wide gap, and you just text pose it, and you're set. That is a weedless soft jerk bait. So anywhere that you would throw any regular jerk bait, you can now throw a weedless version of it in and around docks, in and around wood, over the top of grass beds where you would otherwise throw a frog on the sparse stuff. You can fish it almost anywhere. Okay, we've got that out of the way. Now let's get down to the brass tacks of this thing. So it's called fluke fishing. That's because the Zoom Super Fluke owns the category. That said, almost every major brand has a bait in the category. I fish with three. I fish them at different times for different reasons. This is in the you know standard rigging. There's three baits that I fish. The first one is that Zoom Super Fluke. There, that's a given. Here's the deal with the Fluke. The Fluke is very aggressive, harsh movements, very darty, very aggressive jerk motions. You can rig it two different ways. If you do like I've done here, see the first part of the head is solid, then the rest is a hollow cavity. If you come in halfway and pop out the side like that, and then rig it the rest of the way, that bait fishes very effectively just below the surface of the water, say within a foot and a half of the surface, occasionally coming near the surface. If I back that hook up and I come all the way through that solid, then pop out, can you see that? And then I rig it, that moves my hook position back and when I throw it out there, it's going to sink very flat. 
In other words, slower. So if my hook position is forward, when I throw it out, it will tip up and it sinks faster. As a result, it fishes below the surface. If I move my hook back, like I just did, now you've effectively got a top water. Half in the water, half out, as long as you're going pretty quick. And I like to fish a fluke fast. Pop, 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 pop. You know, pop, 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 pause, pop, pause, pop, 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 pop. Darting and jumping in and out of the water. When bass are aggressive, when they're chasing early and late in the day, or they're around cover and they want to ambush, it's unbelievable how well it works if you move that hook back and keep this bait up as a true top water. And that is very overlooked. I mean, there are a lot of people that use this as a Carolina rig bait and nothing else that have no idea it could be fished as a top water or even as a reaction bait. This works. Now, I mentioned that the super fluke, the fluke, because the fluke, if you will, is not actually the fluke. The fluke is a little different profile. I'm sure I've got them. Let me pull out the actual zoom fluke. Yep, there's one right there. That's an actual zoom fluke. The fluke that the vast majority of us refer to as a fluke is the zoom salty super fluke. That's this. This is the salty super fluke junior. So when I say fluke fishing, 95% of the time, I'm talking about the super fluke rather than the fluke, okay? Now, we've talked about what the fluke can do. Very darty, very harsh movements, very mechanical, if you will. I have two more baits. Set that one aside. The next one is the X-Zone. This guy, the Whiplash Shad, is an incredible bait. We got a loud boat rolling by here, but he'll be gone in just a second. The Whiplash Shad, let me pull one out for you. It's a little longer, okay? It's much softer. Look at the difference when I turn them horizontally. Much, much softer. And the tail section is pretty flat as it runs back. The result is that this bait is much more snaky, for lack of a better term. Where a fluke is like this, this bait is fluid. It flows. Very snaky movements in the water. I can do the same things with it. I can bring that hook forward and keep it right up near the surface, or I can move it back. And this bait actually sinks faster than a super fluke. So I'm fishing effectively from a foot below the surface, or if I wanna slow it down, three, four, five feet below the surface. So I'm able to reach deeper even on a standard rig. The main difference here is just mechanical action versus that slithering, snaky action. If a lot of people throw soft jerk baits where you live, throwing one that's different will blow the doors off. Uh, I have done so much more damage on the Whiplash Shad this year than I have with a Super Fluke. Uh, I latched onto it in February on a trip and I, I basically just never stopped throwing it after that. I have crushed them literally from coast to coast this year on this bait. Uh, I really like that slower, more snaky action. The last one is also very different. This is the Yamamoto D shad. Much like the whiplash shad, it sinks faster than a super fluke. So you're naturally fishing a little lower in the water column. The cool thing about this one, profile wise, you're, you're basically the same bait, okay? But the super fluke has the fork tail where the D-Shad has this pointed tail, but that pointed tail actually has four distinct ridges. The result is that if you stop working it and you let it sink, 
It almost sinks like a Senko. It's got a straight up shimmy on its way to the bottom. Very different. So this bait is much more of a crossover between, I mean, if I was gonna treat this thing like a soft jerk bait and like a Senko, I absolutely would throw a D shad, not a super fluke. Uh, there's just so much more action there. It looks really good. In terms of the actual fishing it, I would say it's halfway between the snaky action of a whiplash shad and the aggressive movements of a super fluke. Halfway in between. All three are very effective baits. So again, that standard rig, text post. I'm typically going to do that on either a medium or a medium heavy rod. You can use either one. Uh, this year I've really latched on to this 7.3 medium. I fish it on braid to a 15 pound leader. That's my go-to with the four aught wide gap hook. I've enjoyed throwing it on a medium because when you blast those fish, I mean, you bury that rod into them, fully bowed up and just the battle is on. But you can absolutely throw it on a medium heavy as well. Odds are you own the perfect combo for this technique already. So that's the standard fluke. Now let's talk about the donkey rig. Okay, the donkey rig could be done with any of these baits. What is it? It's using two baits simultaneously. So I've already tied the leaders just for the sake of time, but I have not rigged them up yet. So we're gonna rig them up together. So what we've got is two leaders. I've got a swivel, then about a two foot long leader, and then a four aught wide gap hook. That's that same owner all purpose bait hook. Then I've got a second leader, swivel, 18 inches of line, ballpark. And then what I like to do is a three aught hook for my second one, a little smaller hook. Now there's other ways to achieve what I'm gonna show you. You can use two four aught hooks as long as you do some different things. We'll get to that in a second. But let me show you how we rig it, okay? So for the donkey rig specifically, I actually move up to a heavy action rod. It's the only time that I think uh, a heavy is a better option for a soft jerk bait. But the reason why is that there are times where you get two fish to bite at the same time because you have two independent baits moving. When you hook the first one, no big deal. But if you've got a fish on and you get bit again, it's very hard to plant a three or four aught hook in the second fish. So I use a heavy so that I've got the horsepower remaining to get that second fish too. This specifically is the Shimano Zodius, the 7.5 Heavy. The reason why I use that rod, it has a long handle. See the difference? A few more inches of handle there over most, well, that's a bait finesse rod. That's not a good example. That's a little shorty handle. But that long handle just gives me more because you're kind of lobbing this rig like you would a Carolina rig. It's not a normal cast. So that longer handle really helps, but a heavy action is the main thing. Braided line, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my short one, my 18 incher, I'm gonna take my braid and I go right through the eye. I don't tie to it at all. It's sliding on the main line, okay? Then I take the longer one, the 24 inch leader, and I tie to it. I like to use a double San Diego jam when I tie direct to braid. Basically, that's just a San Diego jam with an extra loop around the eyelet. It's not even a true San Diego jam, or it's not a true double, but it's what I do. Works very, very well. Let me finish this knot off here as we bounce in the waves. Clip that little tag end and we will be in business if I can find my scissors. And we got pliers, that should work. All right, so we now have our two leaders. 
one tied direct to the main line and the other sliding on the main line. And one sits roughly six inches in front of the other. Actually here it's about eight inches in front of the other, but good enough. Now I can take two identical, excuse me, two identical super flukes and rig them up. I can use identical baits because I chose to go with a three-aught and a four-aught hook. The weight difference between the hooks will help create separation. The key with the donkey rig is that you want the two baits to run at different elevations. What I mean is this looks like it would be a snaggy nightmare. Shockingly, it's not. It's very easy to fish. These baits do a great job of untangling themselves all the time. You will very rarely have a tangle, despite it looking like a complete disaster. All right, we're rigged up, let me show you. So, we've got our two swivels, one sliding on the other, to our two Zoom Super Flukes. Now, when I throw this out there and fish it, What these baits do in the water, as I'm popping and working them, is they crisscross. One is behind the other, one's chasing, it's like a school of fish. So where a fluke looks great on its own, now you have two and they work opposite of each other. They're like this, completely opposite. They dance all over each other. I really like two different elevations so that the fish can come in and completely swipe the one in the back the low one, the one with the four-aught hook, it's sitting deeper. They can swipe that one, and then that still leaves the other bait completely clear and in the open. If it's a school of fish, another one can come in and get the other. I mean, I just popped them a bunch, then reeled it up. They come in, no tangle whatsoever. It's amazing. Now, there are some variations here that you can do. If you wanna run two four-aught hooks, because that's your best hookup ratio, all you need to do is run two different styles of fluke. So you can run a super fluke on your front one because it's lighter weight, and then either the D shad or the adrenaline shad on the back one and it will naturally sit lower. You can also go zoom super fluke in the back and then a super fluke junior in the front on a two odd hook. That looks really good too. Then it's like a bigger fish chasing a smaller fish. Bass just kill them all. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Now, one thing I will say, this is important. Let me grab this bag of super flukes. I'm gonna spin this around so you can see the back. One thing that is important is that your flukes sit perfectly straight. If it's a kinked bait, tail down, tail up, that bait is trash. So super flukes are really, really inexpensive. However, several of the baits in this pack are junk. Just throw them away. There, there is no point in trying to use that bait right there. And there's another one hidden down behind. Absolutely worthless. But these guys over here are sitting dead straight. Those are perfect baits. So whenever you're getting flukes, if it's a fresh pack, try to get them to sit straight in the bag so they don't get kinked. If it's an old bag, toss the ones that are all kinked up. The others, both the Adrenaline and the D-Shad, they're packaged much more effectively. Um, I don't have any problems. Every bait in the pack is completely fishable every single time. I have no issues with those baits, so keep that in mind. If your fluke is coming through the water spinning, there's an issue either with your rigging or you just grabbed one that was kinked. Get rid of that. You want a bait that's got perfect movement, not spiraling and having problems. All right, so we've talked standard fluke fishing. We've talked donkey rigging. Now we're gonna talk about the nose rig. The nose rig is something we really latched onto maybe, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Maybe it's been longer than that now. We realized, and I don't even remember how we realized anymore, it's been so long, 
These fish like to eat a soft jerk bait. Oh, I remember exactly how we figured it out. We were shooting underwater footage and we saw it. These fish love to hit a soft jerk bait head first, consistently. When we're watching underwater footage, head first, head shot every time. If they have a choice, the only time they don't is if it's going really fast and they're just trying to catch up and they just eat it whole. But given a choice, they come in and they turn sideways and they blast the head of that bait. So we fish a lot of clear water fisheries. What we started doing is going to spinning tackle. This is the Loomis 872. Okay, that is hands down my favorite rod for this technique. I use a twin power, which is a very, very powerful reel. And then I use for the standard size baits, I use a one aught. For the little tiny baits, which we're gonna get to, I use a size two, okay? But I've got a one aught Gamakatsu finesse wide gap hook. Now, I take my standard fluke, I already grabbed it. This is an owner CPS spring, size medium. All of a sudden it's feeling, it's feeling stormy. It feels like it's gonna rain. We might be cutting this one a little short, I hope not. We take that owner CPS spring, medium size, and I'm gonna screw it right into the nose of that bait. And as I do that, I like to push the bait forward and really bunch it up on there. And I'm gonna screw that screw in until it disappears in the nose of that bait, okay? It's completely inside the nose. Then I take my finesse wide gap and I stab through the nose of the bait, through my CPS spring and out the top. Now you can do it without the spring, but you will go through way more baits. This just became very, very rigid, very solid. Now that is the nose hook. It looks like your hookup ratio would be terrible with that hook way out there on the tip of the nose, but it is the reverse. These fish inhale it. And it looks, I mean, it's reminiscent of the banjo minnow from back in the day as seen on TV. That's why we sometimes joke and call it the banjo minnow rig. But this is incredibly effective. What we found is that when you fish this, 100% of the fish shoot it head first. And as a result, when you set the hook, you've got them in the roof of the mouth, in the back of the mouth. Not only is it an excellent hookup ratio, it's hooked in the perfect place so that the fish just do not come off. It works. I mean, frankly, it works better than Texas rigging them, but there's a lot of times that you wanna fish these in and around grass and heavy cover and the Texas rig is just more convenient. But when you get around clear water or you don't have grass, that nose rig is the deal. Again, we're throwing it on spinning tackle. So I could absolutely send this thing. Still flying. There, I just hit. Way out there. And that's on dry braid. You can throw it super far in clear water. I like to throw this with like an eight pound leader and then I can just send that thing to the moon, like across the ends of shallow points or over the top of flooded island tops, humps, pulling spotted bass, large mouth, small mouth, drawing those fish up in open water and getting them to eat where they wouldn't even eat a traditional jerk bait because they could see all the hooks. The water's crystal clear. They come up super hot, they're gonna eat it. And it's like they get a good look at it and they bail. The soft jerk bait has got a lot of hook too but when you go to that nose rig, it doesn't. You're on lighter line, you're making longer casts, less hook, and they just smoke it. Now, that's the standard size. You can also go tiny. So this is a little Damiki armor shad, little split tail, same medium CPS spring, but with a number two Gamakatsu finesse wide gap, okay? And then last but not least, that brings us to bait finesse, which could also be done on really, really, really light spinning. But this is something we've talked about in other videos and you've seen us fish it very effectively throughout the summer. This little guy, 
the Jackal Rhythm Wag, the three and a half. That bait, it's got a little fork tail, a long fork tail actually for the size of the bait. And I rigged that on a little tiny one aught BKK hook. This setup on bait finesse, I mean, you can throw it to the other side of the county. I can send this thing so far and I'm throwing it on super, super light tackle. So six to eight pound braid to like a six pound leader, or a lot of times I'll throw it on either six or seven pound straight fluorocarbon. Very, very light tackle. It's a downsized presentation. I mean, look at it compared to a, a standard super fluke. It's tiny. Now, Zoom makes other baits. They make the standard fluke. They make a tiny fluke, really small. You could use that. That's it's really high in the water column. Basically a top water when you do it like this. But this Jackal is like the perfect balance for me of a sink rate and a, a really dirty, awesome action. And I've just crushed them on it. That's definitely my favorite bait in this size profile. But you can also, again, you can do that Demiki rig. Well, I call it a Demiki rig. You do the nose rig with the little Demiki. The Jackal is such a soft bait. It doesn't hold up really well with the nose rig. I like the Texas rig on that. The Demiki is a little bit more rigid of a bait, a little bit more durable, and it does better with that little nose rig. But you could throw either one of those on bait finesse gear as well, which is, if you're not familiar, ultralight bait casting. So super soft rods, despite being a bait caster. And of course you could do it with an ultralight spinning rod as well. It's just not quite as fun as the bait caster in my opinion. And the bait caster is more accurate. I'm able to really come into heavy cover low to the water. I can come in lower with a bait caster than I can with a spinning rod, speaking for me personally. But those are the different applications for me of a soft jerk bait. The soft jerk bait's incredibly effective. It draws a reaction strike uh, and it draws it from a lot of different situations. You can throw it in open clear water. You can throw it in the thickest of heavy cover, matted vegetation where fish are ambushing through. You can fish that thing, I mean, the same places as a frog. And then you can also just fish it going down the bank. By adapting the different styles of bait, you can reach different places in the water column with different presentations. If you throw a soft jerk bait a lot and you haven't tried that whiplash shad, you absolutely need to do that. That snaky action gets crushed. And I mean like slick, calm, hot days where they should not react. I'm still getting fish to react. Uh, it doesn't come in a lot of colors, but the handful it comes in are really, really fishy colors. And then same with that D shad. If you want to a bait where you can do both. It's got this awesome, awesome shimmy on the fall. It gets them. Guys, I hope this helps you. I will link the baits, the rigging methods, the specific rods that I use for each style, all of that in the video description just to help you guys out so you can fish with confidence. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.